What's going on everyone? I am Bubbles Buzzer Beater and this is the unofficial official Buzzer Beater YouTube channel back again with another video and today I wanted to discuss one of the most underappreciated and underutilized offenses I think Buzzer Beater has in the game and that offense is Reverse Patient. Uh, so for those of you that don't know what Reverse Patient is I have a uh, game right here from season 39 back in 2017 between the United States U21 national team and the Italian U21 national team. So you'll see that the uh, score was 88-85 in favor of the United States, but when you look at the actual ratings you'll uh, find that the game was a lot closer than what the ratings would indicate. And this is because Italy ran reverse patient, so although the United States had better ratings for outside scoring, inside scoring, rebounding, and offensive flow, the uh, game engine benefited Italy a lot more because of this reverse patient style. So when you go down to the box score right here, you'll see that Italy placed a shooting guard at center, and he ended up taking 36 shots, 16 threes while making 7 of them, and 12 free throws. So that single player alone scored 47 points despite only having a 6.0 rating. And then if you look at the United States centers who were guarding him, although their ratings were better, having ratings of 16.5 both for the starting center and backup center, Italy had a better mismatch for that player and uh, it caused a lot of problems for the United States national team. And this is a strategy that I think a lot of teams don't use when they could. Uh, reverse patient is an offense that can both help you exploit a weaker opponent if they have uh, donkey bigs or bigs without any guard skills and outside defense and it can also help you for if you feel like you're outmatched and playing a team that's a lot better than you this might be a, a style for a game where you can uh, take a chance and go reverse patient and it might give you so some results that you want so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my lineup page and just show you what a uh, reverse patient setup would look like. So you'll see that I have uh, nine players dressed for this game. And then um, Pascal right now, who I have at center, he is actually, come playoff time, he will be my shooting guard. Uh, but for training purposes, I have him and my other trainee, Odell Bowens, playing a lot of center this season. So I've actually been playing Reverse Patient about 25% of the games this season, and uh, this is the setup that I use a lot. So you'll see that I have my shooting guard slash small forward at the center spot, and then I actually slide my center to power forward and my power forward to small forward. And then the only thing that I wanted to uh, show you was that you do have to do defensive switches when you're playing reverse patient. That's very, very important. Otherwise, the other team will have a lot of mismatches when they come back down the other end of the floor. So you'll see right here that I actually slid the center spot. So I'm saying the center is gonna defend small forward. So I have Pascal, who's a shooting guard or small forward defending small forward. And then my small forward, who's my current power forward defending power forward. And then my power forward, who is my current center, guarding center. So I have that little cycle of defensive switches that allow reverse patient to be effective on defense and offense. And now the uh, next thing I wanted to go into was I wanted to look at how reverse patient distributes shots between all the players when you're running specifically reverse patient. So you have a point guard, shooting guard, or uh, scoring small forward at center. Uh, because we have some statistics as to how patient works and how patient distributes shots, but not necessarily reverse patient. So what I did was I went through 100 games uh, of reverse patient, collected across 37 different teams of various team levels. So I got 100 games and I was just looking at how shots were just uh, distributed in those games. So if you look at this chart, I have the division set up, so I have uh, 25 Division 4 games, 25 Division 3 games, 25 Division 2 games, and then 25 Division 1 slash B3 games. And I wanted to uh, record all of the shots that each position is taking, 
and then get a percentage down at the bottom for each league as well as overall so we could get an idea of how well reverse patient works and how often your best player who is playing center will be shooting so you'll see right here for division four there were uh, 1,908 total shots in those 25 games that I recorded. And then the center or the shooting guard, small forward, point guard, whoever it is at center that you wanted as your scoring threat in reverse patient, they ended up shooting the ball 45.3% of the time. So they took 865 of the shots out of 1,908. And then the power forward took about 12.6% of the shots. The small forward took 10.4%, the shooting guard took 15.7%, and the point guard took 16%. So 45% is a uh, pretty good amount for running a reverse patient offense. And then what I found was Division 4 was actually the most fluky, uh, least accurate in my opinion, for looking at reverse patient offenses. And I think that's because a lot of teams in Division 4 have a lot more holes defensively, so other players are taking more shots. But you'll see that in Division 3, with my 25 game sample, of the 1,987 shots right here, 1,027 of them were shot by the player playing center in the reverse patient role for a 51.7% uh, share of the shots. And then the same thing for the power forward, it was 12.3%, small forward 11.9%, shooting guard 12.9% and point guard 11.2%. So all of them were in that 11 to 12% range, excluding the center who took over half the shots. And then for division two, same exact situation, uh, 2022 shots, 1,009 of them were taken by the player in the reverse patient setup at center for 49.9%. So you're seeing that about 50-50 split again of that player shooting. And then the power forward, small forward, shooting guard, and point guard all took between 12 and 13% of the shots, with the center taking half the shots. And then lastly for Division 1 and B3 games, this was the one I was most interested to see because I know a lot of teams, once you get up to higher levels, they don't run reverse patient as much as I see teams do it in like Division 2 and Division 3. But in the Division 1 and B3 games that teams played reverse patient, the center was taking 48.5% of the shots, the power forward 13.8%, the small forward 16.2%, the shooting guard 11.7%, and the point guard only 9.9% of the shots. So after completing this, I wanted to get a estimate of all four of these together. So this bottom yellow bar right here is showing the total shots for the 100 games, not uh, taking into account the different divisions, but just adding all of them together across the 100 games. So there were 7,957 shots, and then of that, 48.9% of the shots in reverse patient were taken by the center. So that was kind of what I wanted to just point out, was that if you have a really, really good offensive player that you think could shoot over uh, centers and, and be effective in a reverse patient he's taking roughly half of your shots so it can be a good mismatch situation for if you're playing a team that's better than you or like I said earlier if you're playing a team that you know is worse than you but you can exploit that specific matchup then that can be impressive but yeah so it looks like overall all of the players shoot between 12 13 percent roughly um, of the shots taken in the game and it'll depend on your team setup because across all these games, there were different players taking more shots than others for the other positions that weren't center. Um, so I think that just depends more on what your specific team setup looks like. Um, but roughly 12% of the shots. And then for the center, who you want taking the majority of your shots shoots roughly half of them. So I think that's why reverse patient is uh, so effective. Specifically, I wanted to look at these two games right here highlighted in yellow and this is because these two games were actually B3 finals games by the same manager Dark Kanako and he is one of the best managers on Buzzerbeater in my opinion. Uh, I actually had a 
person reach out to me on the Discord and ask me why he wasn't on the greatest dynasties of all time video. And it's just because he is the only manager who has won B3 both with his Utopia team as well as his main team. Uh, but both of them only have one, so he wasn't quite uh, there for the Dynasty teams. But I still think he is one of the best managers on this game. And he actually won a B3 final back in Season 42, I believe. Uh, let's see if we can find it. Yeah, 42, Season 42 with his Utopia team. And in that final game, he won B3 with a reverse patient. And then again, last season, he won B3 with a reverse patient. So I wanted to just kind of show his games to just, I guess, prove to you guys that I can work at the highest level. It's not just some gimmick for lower leagues, but it can actually win you a B3 tournament. So this is going to be his older game, the Season 42 B3 Championship. And you'll see that his opponent played low post man-to-man. -man. Uh, one thing that I will mention is this reverse patient tactic only works against a man-to-man -man defense. Uh, shots get a little weird and not distributed the way that you'd want them if your opponent is playing a 3-2 zone or a 2-3 zone. So it is only really effective against man-to-man. -man. Uh, but I think that more times than not, people are playing man-to-man -man defense especially at these higher levels where they are expecting everyone to go look inside. So you'll see right here that his center took 49 shots, 11 threes, and six free throws for 63 points. And that was actually a shooting guard that he played at center. So you'll see that he won a uh, close game, uh, used tactics perfectly, used game day prep, but that reverse patient was used to win his first B3 title. And then uh, again, just last season, you'll see that uh, Mwati, who won the best dynasty in Buzzer Beater in my last video, but he actually went look inside and double guessed game day prep uh, inside and fast against him. And Dark Hinoko went reverse patient again and ended up winning the B3 final with this tactic. So. Like I said, he has a lot of other accolades, but he's one of the high-end managers that I see run Reverse Patient the most, and I am a big fan of Reverse Patient as well. So I just wanted to uh, make a video discussing the offense, how it works, and why it's effective, and then uh, give a shout out to Dark Anoko because he is just uh, one of the best managers, and it's something that he, he runs a lot. So. I wanted to give him a shout out and talk about this offense, but I think I'm going to call it for this video. So I hope you guys have a good one and uh, like and subscribe because I, uh, I put a lot of uh, time into this video for sure. But I'll be coming out with a training video. Uh, someone requested just a basic how to train video that I'll be coming out with later this week. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, besides that, have a good one, guys. Oh, yeah.